Sci-fi role-playing game Cyberpunk 2077 was the showstopper here at E3 2018, in that the Xbox conference literally stopped right after it, but also in that it was the most thrilling trailer of that entire show. In the wake of all that futuristic neon loveliness and cybernetic spectacle, we're more pumped than an overinflated airbed for CD Projekt Red's next game, and here's why. Despite being the grimy science fiction subgenre with the coolest androids and the best trench coats, cyberpunk is somehow criminally underserved in video games. It's far from every day a kick ass cyberpunky adventure comes along, and given our obsession with, for example, the 1997 point and click adventure Blade Runner, which by the way is brilliant, or the various Deus Exes, or going all the way back to 1994's Beneath the Steel Sky, Cyberpunk 2077 is right up our moodily lit city street. There's something in there, something horrible. According to some hidden notes in the trailer, the world of Cyberpunk 2077 is one in which America is in pieces, megacorporations control all aspects of civilized life, and gangs rule the rest, and with the game being adapted from the classic role-playing game Cyberpunk 2020, a 30-year-old tabletop game set in a sci-fi world as brutal as it is treacherous, developer CD Projekt Red should have no end of inspiring source material to draw on. And speaking of CD Projekt Red… If CD Projekt Red's pedigree for role-playing games were a pedigree dog, it'd be the finest and fanciest dog in the dog show that won all the dog ribbons, and that's the end of this simile. What I mean to say is the developers at CD Projekt Red have a well-deserved reputation for excellent RPGs, on account of how they made the excellent Witcher series, in which a gruff but charismatic protagonist with weird eyes slays dangerous monsters in a richly detailed open world. What are you doing in Tucson? Same thing I do anywhere. Killing monsters. This makes the studio well placed to do a fine job on Cyberpunk 2077, in which a gruff but charismatic protagonist with weird eyes slays dangerous robots in a richly detailed open world. And speaking of dangerous robots. Cyberpunk 2077 promises a lot of things, but especially the opportunity to do battle with robots. Now, if Fallout 4 taught us anything, it's not to trust door to door salesmen. Good morning! Voltec calling. If Fallout 4 taught us a second thing, it's that terrifying robots make great enemies. Now you'll face the full might of the mechanist. And when we say robots, we're bundling together robots, androids, automatons, lifelike animatronics, motorized mannequins, and humans with cybernetic augmentation, or cyborgs, if you will. The appeal is partly how these are powerful and otherworldly techno beings, with their abilities and prowess beyond that of fleshy, unaugmented humans. Ugh. How I hate their lack of leg springs. It's also partly how you can murderize these robotic enemies with a clean conscience, because it's not as if you're executing a real human, it's more like smashing up a toaster or an electric whisk. But it's also partly the way in which killing off humanoid but not natural human enemies raises sticky questions, such as what do we mean by human? And why should I have a clean conscience for killing beings lifelike enough to blur the line between organic and synthetic life? And actually, this isn't like smashing up a toaster or electric whisk at all, is it? And speaking of cod philosophical nightmares. Where there's science fiction with beings that look human but aren't, or that are human but don't look it, there's thoughtful transhumanist musing to be done. Just look at the popularity of Westworld with its lifelike cowboy murderbots. In the same way the Deus Ex games had a nice line in pondering how humanity evolves in a future where humans can change their minds and bodies, Cyberpunk 2077's world is a rich vein from which to mine themes of transhumanism and related ethical dilemmas. We suspect these themes in Cyberpunk 2077 will make for some interesting moral choices, with more shades of grey than my mum's bookcase. As with any open world game worth its salt, the real test for Cyberpunk 2077 will be how much compelling stuff there is to do when you're not following the story. With that said, looking at this world and this city, we'd bet that Cyberpunk is going to be as diverting as a Philip K. Dick book title is overlong and confusing. The Witcher let his players ignore the main story and instead spend their time focusing on horse racing, brawling, and Gwent, and will take sci fi versions of those activities for a start, with robot fights, hollow Gwent, and I don't know, what's the sci fi equivalent of a horse? Oh! Right, a car. Car racing. We're excited to see what else CD Projekt Red comes up with to keep us occupied in Cyberpunk, however. If they can create a brilliant card game from scratch, they can definitely invent some cool new future sports, like rocket sled bowling or blazer jousting. You can have those, in fact, CD Projekt, you're welcome.
Look, OK, we all know the post-human future is ethically fraught, with its cruel roadside stompings and how sinister probable assassin droids have to carpool with three across the back seat with zero elbow room. That's not right. There are certain compensations to be had in a cyberpunk future, however, and the top one is how cars will be flying cars, or hovering cars, or at the very least look like a Mad Max car and Knight Rider had a secret car baby. CD Projekt Red doesn't have a wealth of racing game experience, if you don't count the horse racing bits in Witcher 3, but we have confidence that this perfectionist studio will pull off something suitably cool for vehicle action in Cyberpunk 2077. Or at least they better had. If our presumable protagonist here is posing with a substandard motor, that would just be embarrassing. And are you going to tell him his car handles like a bathtub on a skateboard? Didn't think so. The last thing we're looking forward to in Cyberpunk 2077 is luxuriously deep customization, because judging from the outfits everyone is wearing in the trailer, these people need a little help dressing themselves. I kid. The reason we're excited is that all the clothes look amazing and we can't wait to put together outfits that incorporate neon lights into the collar and back patch, or enough clashing colors and patterns in a single garment that we have to pause and check that we're not hallucinating from spending too much time watching the Cyberpunk 2077 trailer. This is confirmed for Cyberpunk 2077 as well, thanks to internet sleuths deciphering some hidden messages in the trailer that state that yes, you will be able to create your own character, as in all good RPGs. It's not just clothes either. If we're going all transhumanist, we want to be able to spend the time choosing our abilities and upgrades, and even deciding if we want to have those weird lines on our face or not. It looks like it's optional, maybe? If it is, maybe don't. Looks a bit weird. Those were the items on our growing list of reasons we cannot wait to get our hands on Cyberpunk 2077. Are you in, or are you out? Share your Cyberpunky thoughts in the comments, please, and subscribe to Outside Xbox for more on Cyberpunk 2077 as we get it. Thanks for watching.